Hello and in this video we are going to learn how to use VLOOKUP in Excel Now VLOOKUP is actually one of the three most commonly used functions in Excel The other two being SUM and IF functions But actually using VLOOKUP is quite tricky because it tends to give errors and it doesn't behave the way we want it to behave Another thing about working with Excel is that if you don't use a particular function or formula for let's say three or four months then you could forget how to use it the very thought of having to cook up a VLOOKUP function can be actually quite daunting but don't worry in this video I'm going to show you a few basic concepts of using VLOOKUP and you don't have to remember all of this but once you know the concept you could easily find out the solution for it all right so let's go so now in the first example, you can see here that I have a very simple table that I need to look up. So you can see here that I'm selling agricultural products to international buyers and they pay in their own currency. And now I need to look up the exchange rate, which is on this table and we'll call that a VLOOKUP table. All right, so let's learn how to do that with VLOOKUP. So first, let's start by typing in the equal sign. And this is basically telling Excel that we are going to enter a formula. Actually, you can just key in just a few letters and then uh, Excel will give us a, a suggestion of what they think the formula would be. And so in this case, it is VLOOKUP. That is good. So all we need to do is to press tab and Excel will complete the typing for us. So now after VLOOKUP, we'll need to open bracket and here we will enter the arguments for our function. So the lookup value could be what we are trying to look up in this VLOOKUP table. In this case, it could be D6, okay, comma, and then the table array could be our lookup table. So in this case, it could be this table. Now the table array means the lookup table minus the header row. Please remember not to enter the header row, otherwise Excel could get confused. Okay, now comma. Column index number is which column number do we want it to return? So in this case, we want to look up from this table and we want Excel to return the value from the second column. So in this case, we'll just press 2, all right, comma. And then here is where it gets interesting because you need to decide whether this is a, an approximate match or an exact match. Now, but in this case, because we will need to look up um, the uh, the exchange rate for a specific currency and we want it to return it with a very specific and exact result so in this case we will need to choose exact match false so all you need to do is to press the down arrow uh, until you get to false and then press tab all right and this is good so now our formula is completed all we need to do is to close bracket and then hit enter and you can see that, um, okay, so Myanmar, MYR, exchange rate is 4, that sounds good. Okay, so let's just go to the bottom right-hand corner of the first cell and double-click. And know what happens. This is not correct. Do you know why? So the first cell is correct, but look at what happens in the second cell. The second cell, the table array becomes from H13 to I20. It's being moved one row down and this is not correct. We want this uh, lookup table to be fixed, but we did not tell Excel that. So when we autofill the, the cells, so Excel will automatically move our table array by one row. So that is why it is not returning us with the correct result. Now, what do we do in this case? Well, there are two things that you can do. Uh, first, you can lock the table array. And in order to lock it, all you need to do is to press F4 until you see that there's a $2 sign next to H and 12. All right, so this is telling Excel that we want to lock the cell so that it doesn't move around, okay? This is good. Press enter. And now Excel will give us the correct result. But now we have a problem. So this currency exchange rate is good. But let's just say that tomorrow we will be adding another currency. For example, uh, Japanese yen. 
and we'll call it 10 the exchange rate will be 10 and then i'm going to change the the last cell to japanese yen now it will give us problem this is because we very specifically tell Excel that we want to lock in the cell from H12 to I19 but when our data grows beyond those locked cells then we will need to go back and change our original formula and let me tell you that this could be a pain in the ass and a lot of errors could happen in the real workplace and that leads to a lot of undesirable business consequences so in this case a better alternative could be to format the lookup table into a next cell table all right and it is quite simple actually all you need to do is to select the entire table go to insert and select table and that's it now i'm going to add in japanese yen okay and i'll make it 10 and the table automatically grows with us okay now let's go back and change our vlookup function so instead of locking the cell forcibly like this we'll just need to refer to it as a table okay and now because our table has a name table one or we don't have to to worry like from which cell to which cell is our table excel will automatically manage it for us okay hit enter and that is done now uh, i'm going to test if it is working properly by changing this cell to another currency and let's just call it um british pound gbp okay and i'm going to add in gbp here and the exchange rate will be 11 okay oh so now i understand why it doesn't work because here i put it in as gbp and now but in the lookup table i put it in as gpb and because we are doing an exact match so it doesn't work so what we need to do is to make sure that all the currency abbreviation is correct in an exact match so gbp now it will work properly and now in order to convert the final amount in local currency all we need to do is to do a simple um, calculation so equal amount c6 multiplied by exchange rate which is e6 and double click to auto fill the formula down and now we can easily find out how much sales we have made in the past month so now in the second example we'll learn how to handle approximate match for tax so you can see here that i have a list of customers and then i have four agents and each will take care of a few customers so what i want to do is that for customers whose names start from a until f then the agent will be bob for customers whose first name starts from g to l then the agent will be susan so i want to allocate so each um, agent will be assigned a certain number of customers based on the first initial of their first name all right so how do we tell excel to do that well actually it's a lot easier than you thought okay so just equal v lookup vl and then tab to complete the lookup now lookup value is b4 so i want to see who is taking care of elaine all right so comma table array is f5 to to g9 and here because this is a very uh, simple table so i'm going to lock up the value or you can you can also put it inside an excel table okay so comma and column index number it could be number two because i want to return which agent is taking care of these particular customers now and then for the range lookup uh actually we don't want exact match but for the purpose of this exercise let's choose exact match and see what happens all right so tab false false is exact match okay close bracket and then hit enter now let's double click to auto fill the formula down and you can see that if you if we are choosing exact match 
then Excel will not return us with anything because in the exact match, Excel will only look at those whose name is Elaine and they can they cannot see Elaine in this lookup table so they will not return us with anything and they cannot see Terence or Mamet or Stephen or Herma or Mackenzie either all right so they will not return us with anything okay now let's go for approximate match and see what happens okay let's change to approximate match And voila, it works like a charm. Because for us approximate match, whenever Excel cannot see the exact match, Excel will look in between. So if they cannot see A, they will look in between between A and G. So E is between A and G, so they will return Bob and H is between G and M. So they will return us with Suzanne. So that works beautifully. Now, for the approximate match, it could either be text or numbers. But remember, it must be in alphabetical order. So you cannot have S first and then M and then G and then A. It must be from A to Z. So similarly with numbers for approximate match, it must be from lowest to highest and it should not be the other way around this way excel will work properly all right now some of you might be wondering okay so this is great but i'm using an earlier version of office and the vlookup function just doesn't work so in this case for example if you have an early version of office such as uh, let's say office 2010 or office 2013 yes it might not work properly but don't worry let me show you how to ha handle it all right so forget agent now first we will need to pick out the first initial and then we will do a vlookup so the first initial of the name is elaine okay so t is terence control e for flash fill oh but actually flash fill doesn't work because here mackenzie flash fill will return us with mck so in this case Let's try with another function. So in this case, we will use the left function. So equal left and the text is before. We only want the left function to return us with the first character of the first of the customer name. So press one and then close bracket and then hit enter. Okay, now double click to autofill and now this will work. Now you can do the VLOOKUP as usual. Okay, so equal VLOOKUP. And lookup value is C4, okay. Table array is F5 to G8. Now let's lock the cell, or you can also put it inside a table. Okay, now column index number is number two because we want to find out which agent is handling this particular customers. All right, and then the range lookup is approximate match, so it's true. All right, close bracket and then hit enter. Double click. And there you go. So I hope you found this video useful. That's it for now. Happy learning and see you in the next video.